In this video, we now want to derive the other sum in difference trigonometric identity. We're going to obtain that of cos alpha plus beta in this video. Subsequently, we'll look at that of sine alpha plus beta and sine alpha minus beta. But before we go into these, there are certain bases that we should be used to some very important concepts. What are these? Look at them on the board here. Alright? One of them is we should know that sine theta is an odd function. And for an odd function, if you now consider sine negative theta, it's going to give you minus sine theta. Look at it. So if we have something like sine minus 30, now we expect to get minus sine 30. It's a property of odd functions. What about cos? We should know that cos negative theta would give us cos theta. That is positive cos theta. Because cos theta is an even function. As an even function, even if you have something like cos minus 30, the result you are going to get would be cos 30. So these concepts are very, very important. That is not all. We want to go back to our unit right angle triangle. Is that okay? And then recall the fact that in right angle triangle, the total sum of the angle in it is equal to 90 degree. Is that okay? That they are supplementary. There is the angle here and the angle here. If you add both of them, it will be equal to this angle here, 90. We are used to this diagram already. Is that not so? Fine. Now, that being the case, previously we had derived that sin theta is equal to y. We also derived that cos theta is equal to x. But now we have these two angles here. This is theta. We say that the sum of this angle plus this angle is equal to 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the same as pi over 2 radian. Take note of that. 90 degrees is the same as pi over 2 radians. Pi over 2 radian. So if the sum of angle in the right angle is complementary, that is equal to 90, we know this one already. Therefore, this one will be 90 minus this value is also. And that 90 is the same as pi over 2 because pi is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees divided by 2 gives you 90. Alright, having explained that concept, we want to look at point number 3 and 4 that is very important for us to be aware of before we can actually work towards obtaining these identities from cos alpha minus beta. Is that okay? Sin theta is equal to y. We already know that before. We can see that from this angle. But take note of something. Sin theta is equal to y. Do you know that if I take cos pi over 2 minus theta, that is cos of this angle here, it will also be equal to y? Because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos of this angle, adjacent is y to this angle. Are you getting it right? That is why I was telling you something in our initial video. I explained that it's very important for us to know the opposite and the adjacent of the right angle triangle. The opposite is the side facing the given angle you are considering, and the adjacent is the other side not facing it. We don't have problem with hypotenuse. Is that okay? The longer side facing the right angle triangle is the hypotenuse. So since sine theta here, sine of this angle is equal to y, if you take cos of this angle here, it's going to be adjacent y over hypotenuse 1, which means that cos of this angle, pi over 2 minus theta, is equal to y also. Sine theta is equal to y, cos pi over 2 minus theta also equal to y. Now, if sine theta is equal to y, and cos, cos pi over 2 minus theta is also equal to y, it simply tells us that sine theta is the same as cos pi over 2 minus theta. So you can equate both of them. The same thing happens if you go the other way around. 
taking cos theta, cos theta will give you x. It's equal to coming to this sine pi over 2 minus theta. Sine pi over 2 minus theta will give you opposite because x will not be the opposite since it is facing all over hypotenuse 1. So cos theta is equal to sine pi over 2 minus theta. That's a 90 minus theta. But we're using pi over 2 in this case. Look at it. So these four concepts are very important. One, two, three, four. Please go through them, listen to the video again, and understand the concepts. Because it is from this analysis we can actually succeed in deriving with understanding the value of cos alpha plus beta, sine alpha plus beta, sine alpha minus beta, from this cos alpha minus beta, which we already have established. Are we ready for that? Now let us get the value of cos alpha plus beta now. How do we proceed in doing that? Cos alpha plus beta will be rewritten as cos alpha minus minus beta. Minus minus will still give you plus. So mathematically you are consistent. You are correct. Is that okay? We want to get this thing in terms of this cos alpha minus beta. So this plus will be written as minus minus. Okay, now, having written that in this format, we can now get the trigger identity for cos alpha minus minus beta. We know the standard already for cos alpha minus beta. This minus now, look at this. Is that okay, right? So, it's going to give us cos alpha times cos minus beta. Remember, it's minus with this beta, beta there. So, it's going to be cos alpha cos minus beta then plus sine alpha sine minus beta using the identity we already established of equation 12 remember that now we know that cos is an even function cos of a negative angle will still give you positive cos of that angle it was stated here which means that cos negative beta is still the same as cos beta therefore this part will give us cos alpha cos beta then sine negative beta will give us negative sine beta. We stated that sine is an odd function. So sine of negative any angle is the same as minus sine of that angle. It means that this sine minus beta will produce minus for us. That minus will change this plus to minus. Is that okay? So that this will become sine alpha sine beta. This minus will just come behind you to change this plus to minus. Therefore, cos alpha minus minus beta, which is the same as cos alpha plus beta. Look at it. Is that equal to cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta? Remember, remember, note, we stated that cos negative theta, let me say cos negative beta is equal to cos beta and sine negative beta will be equal to minus sine beta so that's what we used here in the next video we'll look at that of sine alpha plus beta and sine alpha minus beta we are done with that of course because alpha minus beta has been derived because alpha plus beta has also been derived In this video, we are now set to derive the trigonometric identity of sine alpha plus beta. You would recall that in the previous video when we established the trig identity of cos alpha plus beta, I stated that there are four basic concepts we must bear in mind. One of them is the fact that sine is an odd function. So if you have sine of negative an angle, it's going to give you minus sine of that angle. And then if you have cos of negative an angle, we stated that cos is an even function. So cos of a negative angle will change to positive cos of that angle. Now, do not forget something here that all these three identities, they are products of right angle triangle. 
our unit right angle triangle, which means all these sine this, cos that, and the rest of the angles are actually acute angles. That is angles less than 90 degrees in this three identities. So we want to remember that. Now, following our unit right angle triangle, I stated that sine theta will be equal to cos pi over 2 minus theta. And cos theta will be equal to sine pi over 2 minus theta. We established these four points in the previous video. So, we're still going to use that concept. And our trig identity of cos alpha minus beta. So, obtain the trig identity for sine alpha plus beta. So, how do we go about this? Just follow along as we play around this particular identity. We are going to write that sine alpha plus beta we must write it in terms of cos alpha minus beta. How do we achieve this? This is sine of this angle alpha plus beta and you know that this alpha plus beta is an acute angle that is obtained from the right angle triangle. Is that not so? So I'm going to write it in terms of cos pi over 2 minus this angle. Don't forget sine theta is equal to cos pi over 2 minus theta. So this is equal to cos pi over 2 minus this whole term. So it's going to be minus alpha plus beta. Is that clear? Sine theta is cos pi over 2 minus theta. So sine alpha plus beta is going to be cos pi over 2 minus alpha plus beta. Now let us go. You know our aim is to write this in terms of alpha and what? Beta. So this pi over 2 will collect this alpha. So I will now deal with this angle in terms of cos alpha part minus beta part. That is what we are trying to do. So we can be able to work it out. This is going to give us equal to cos pi minus 2, that is pi over 2 rather minus alpha then minus beta so you see that we've picked this together so now I have cos of this angle minus beta we can now write the trig identity following our equation 2 if you still remember right when we derived cos alpha minus beta we stated it was cos alpha times cos beta plus sine alpha times sine beta so applying that here you will notice that our sine alpha plus beta will now be equal to we'll write the trigger identity of this cos now is that okay considering these two angles it's going to be cos pi over 2 minus alpha times cos minus beta is going to be cos beta cos beta is that okay because this minus is a full local minus don't forget what we derived first under this sum and difference angle we derived cos alpha minus beta and we say that the identity is cos alpha times cos beta plus sin alpha times sin beta so that cos alpha minus beta, that minus is a full local minus from the derivation. So this minus is a full local minus. So writing this identity is going to be cos of this angle times cos of this angle. And that's all have here. Plus sine sine of this angle pi over 2 minus alpha times sine of beta and of putting this in bracket sign of beta so we've written the identity it's not left for us to introduce the concept where is the concept cos pi over 2 minus alpha will give us sin alpha remember sin theta is equal to cos pi over 2 minus theta which means that cos pi over 2 minus theta is going to give us sin theta Therefore, cos pi over 2 minus alpha will produce sine of this angle, alpha. 
the right. Sin alpha plus beta is equal to this will be replaced with sine alpha. Look at it. Okay? So I'm going to multiply it by cos beta, then plus. You come here and do something similar. Sine pi over 2 minus alpha is equal to cos alpha. Because you know that sine pi over 2 minus theta gave us cos theta. From those four fundamental concepts you were asked to remember. So I'll come over here and this sign of this angle will change to cos of this angle alpha to multiply by sine beta. And we have established the trigger identity for sine alpha plus beta. This would be equation 14. I'm going to write the number here. Note as a reminder, cos pi over 2 minus alpha is equivalent to sine alpha. And then sine pi over 2 minus alpha is equivalent to cos alpha. So that is what we actually applied here. So you take note of that, right? Sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha times cos beta plus cos alpha times what? Sine beta. In the next video, we'll round off with sine alpha minus beta for some difference of angles.